Hello, 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 everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're at. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully everything is well. Welcome to Breaking Bread with Corey. I am sitting on my veranda. It's a beautiful day out in the Pacific Northwest. Got out for a great walk with the kiddo, uh, trying to rehab my back. For most of you that don't know, I'm actually recovering from a back injury and it's been a long process. Um, and so that's why I have a lot more time on my hands. <laughs> but anyways, um, I'm so excited because we have an amazing lineup of guests tonight, uh, concluding the celebration of Women's History Month. And by, me, by all means, it doesn't just stop there here on Breaking Bread. We are continuing to celebrate women in all aspects of the industry uh, every day of every month. Uh, so hopefully, hello, hello, hello. Uh, hopefully you will continue to join me. Um, I have two wonderful guests uh, coming up. Uh, I have just in a few moments, I'm going to be bringing on... Uh, Francis Gonzalez from My Vegan Wines, and uh, and just a few just a few minutes later after that, I'm gonna br bring in a new ambassador to the industry, uh, Miss uh, Mari Sweeney. Uh, she's a she's a new ambassador to the industry. You gotta welcome her in. Uh, we gotta initiate her. She's gonna be doing an interview with me, sitting down, breaking bread. And um, I'm so excited to share the screen with her. And as, as I am with every one of these ladies that I sit down with, uh, they are amazing women, powerful women, empowering women, inspiring women. Uh, these, this is what the industry should support. And uh, I'm all for it right now. Um, so hopefully you'll enjoy the next two hours uh, of great learning great stories uh and an amazing and amazing women so uh hopefully i said that right uh, and let me see i'm gonna go ahead and let's see Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Let me see if I can bring Frances on. Let's see where she's at. And tonight, it looks like Frances posted the same thing. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be... Um, Drinking and sharing, we're going to be sharing the spotlight of Chiabre, uh, 2017 vegan Malbec um, that Francis uh, distributes here. And um, I'm really anxious to stick my teeth into this baby. Um, I'll be pouring it in. Sitting on my veranda, what I usually do on my Fridays. So let's see. Uh, let's see. Everybody, let's see if Francis got her invites. Let me see if I can bring her on. I'm gonna go under my vegan wines. Let's see. My vegan. Let's see. Ooh. Are. If I can bring you on, let's see, 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 see. Hey, everybody! Thank you for joining. So glad to see everybody. Hopefully, you told everybody about this tonight. Tonight is a great night. We're celebrating. 
Got my wine in hand. Hopefully you have a wine in your hand. Please write out what you're drinking. Also, don't forget, if you have a question for me or Francis or uh, later on, uh, let's see, are we... Uh, let's see. I'm just going to communicate to Francis really quick. Da, 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 da. Okay. Mm. 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 That is beautiful. This is also for the Cachawa Valley of Chile. Uh, so this is not from Argentina, Mendoza, which usually you hear a lot of Malbecs come from. I am inviting you, Francis. Let's see. Let's see if I can bring you on. I'm going to bring you on. There you are. Here we go. I see you. Let's get you rocking in. There we go. Hey! <laughs> How are you? Good. Sitting on my veranda, just chilling out, drinking a, a lovely Malbec. Mm -hmm. You know, you know the one, right? Uh, the one. Same here. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, it is delicious. Absolutely delicious. I'm glad and you, you know, like it. And you know what I'm pairing with it? I I I actually did this for a pairing. I'm actually doing. Trader Joe's raw trail mix. Raw trail mix. <laughs> Have you ever? I, 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 I actually did that, and people were amazed. They're like, "Really, you're gonna pair wine with trail mix?" And I'm like, "Why not?" And they <laughs> loved it. I love it. <laughs> so, how are you? Doing good. It's a lot brighter where you're at than where I'm at. It's pretty. It's nighttime already. So. Oh yeah, yeah. This is. I'm so far north in Oregon that our days now even we're getting toward the end of March and into April that the days seem forever and it's very hard especially for my wife because my wife works early in the morning and she tries to block everything out and it's still sunny outside it's really weird we celebrate 4th of July at midnight because it's it's not dark enough yet. It's really? really it's, in it's July? Really yeah. Wow. I, did, I, I, did, I didn't understand that until I actually talked to somebody that is native to this area, and they're like, oh, yeah, we don't celebrate for us until almost midnight. I was like, okay, that's why the fireworks are going off till like, 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but so it's such an amazing time, beautiful weather, just want to – and I'm so excited to be joining you tonight. We've, I, I've been so excited for this. Um, Likewise. We, we've been talking back and forth, and I finally get to sit down and, and chat with you with your busy life. Such an amazing life. I wish I had that life. <laughs> <laughs> Traveling around. We but, can switch for a week. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll give, you, I'll give you my three-year-old for a week, and then you'll, you'll, your hair will be out to here. <laughs> See, that's why, I wear my, that's why I wear hair sauce, because if I didn't wear the hair sauce, my hair would be all over the place. I'd be like... <laughs> But uh, no, no, no. But by all means, I, I, uh, I really appreciate the time that you're sharing with us. And go ahead and introduce yourself because I wouldn't do you justice. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, and I'm sorry because my kids are grown. They're adults, but I still can't find the uh, handle to hold up the Instagram. So my hand, the, um, the phone for this. So my hand is. Oh, uh, no. Nope. <laughs> no worries. No so, worries. Oh. Uh, my name is Frances Gonzalez, and I'm the founder and owner of Vegan Wines and also Despacito Distributors. Vegan Wines is the online wine club and off-site retail. And Despacito Distributor is we're importer and distributor in California, New York, and Florida. That's It's pretty amazing what you do. And, and you just don't do that because... You're a quadruple threat from <laughs> what I've read and what I've understood. I was like, this lady is a pow, pow, pow. <laughs> you, you do the distribution. You do My Vegan Wines. But you also do the, the My Vegan, uh, Port, uh, the Puerto Rico Fest, right? Right? Yeah. I didn't maybe say the, the title right. But also you 
do stuff for animals. Talk about yes. that too. I love that. <laughs> You're a good woman. Well, you know, I lived in uh, Puerto Rico half my life, and I'm still part time. So one of the things there is the the you know, animals, you know, the dogs and the cats. So when I lived there. I just got into misfits and uh rescuing dogs and cats and just that's my that's my other side thing which is all the time and then anything and i was like why don't we just get them all together and just yeah. you know show everyone what we can do and it was awesome we didn't have no um commercial just just facebook and instagram and we had over 3000 people show up That's pretty amazing. Now, <clears throat> just to let you know, my screen froze up a little bit as you were talking. Okay. But I heard I heard the majority of it. So, uh is there anything that w of importance that I miss and maybe the last minute or so? Um well with the Veg Fest Puerto Rico when Hurricane Maria happened, you know, it right. was very devastating and what i found it was an opportunity to showcase and feature the vendors you know from food to to artwork to everything but all within the green nature and plant based and uh, we didn't have no commercial advertisement just pretty much facebook and instagram we had 3000 people show up over wow. 3000 people yeah That's so it beautiful. was very it, it was good yeah <laughs> that is great and everybody was embracing the the vegan culture of it yeah oh that's my gosh awesome. that's awesome they were, so we have farmers market in the town and i asked one of the ladies at the scraps and i was like can you you know cuz she made it with goat's milk i was like can you just for one day just one day do it with coconut milk she sold right. out she sold out really oh my <laughs> gosh yes <laughs> love that love that yeah i love that I mm -hmm. uh, you know one of my one of my favorite shows we like to watch reality shows and one of the favorite shows besides Impractical Jokers I don't know if you ever seen Impractical Jokers comes from New York <laughs> with the four guys the four comedian guys but you're pretty busy but one of my favorite shows was Cupcake Wars and one the first episode was actually the the winner of Cupcake Wars was a vegan cupcake maker and nice. the best thing about it is the ingredients everybody was saying the judges were saying everything tastes so pure you know you actually taste the flavors whether it's mm -hmm. the fruit or anything else that's in it like you were describing about the coconut milk maybe that adding to that having the coconut milk just adding to that added just so much more depth and allowed other flavors to come out you know what i mean uh but i love that yeah. i love that so Tell me uh one of the best things that I I found on your bio was just how you got involved in the whole vegan wine aspect and the the whole egg white story can you tell that story <laughs> about the egg white <laughs> Yeah I was in I was in France for my birthday and uh we were just doing just you know what what are you doing in France go and visit the wineries and vineyards right and all of a right. sudden i heard i heard egg whites and i had the glass of wine in my hand and my 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 partner at the time he wasn't vegan and he was like oh that that's, that's more wine for me and i'm like wait a second <laughs> we're going to have to find this out so, <laughs> so he did the driving and he didn't drink and i visited so many wineries just to find out like the you know i had a new question i was like okay you know you got to let me know about this 
So it was a very interesting trip for sure. I tasted a lot of wines and I spoke to a lot right. of winemakers. And um, so, that's where I started. So can you go into that for the viewer right now that doesn't really know that all wines are not vegan? Can you go into that little explanation of why vegan, why wines are not all vegan? Well, yeah, you know, I've been a vegan for so long and I'm like, I thought it was just great, right? And so the sedatives um, in the bottom, like when you want to see a clear glass of wine, so they use egg whites and gelatin and just to take away the sedatives, you know. Um, during when I was learning, I was, I was finding out that a lot of winemakers, they use gravity or they use Benedite. So there's other ways to take out, you know, um, right. the sedatives. But um, so that's the main thing. But then the more I went into it, the more I learned from the farmers on what's in the soil. So then it became right. like a whole new project for me. <laughs> right. What, what really was your excitement about really diving further into the vegan wine by category? Uh, I know you're a vegan, but as far as really finding out like how to really push it, how to, how to pursue it, how to get it out to the consumer and just everybody else out there in the industry. Well, even if you're not a vegan, it, it, you know, we care about the environment, right? And right. everything begins at the soil with, you know, in order to get good grapes, you, a good harvest, I mean, you need to take care of the soil. And, and then I was like, okay, so if you're, if, even if you're not vegan, you're, we're, we're, let's start off there. And in order to have a good harvest, you have a good, um, you put in what's necessary or not, because sometimes they fertilize the soil too much and that's not good right. either. So I just feel like in order to get naturally vegan wines, I always like to say natural because then if, you know, then we go back into that whole other stuff. Just right. these winemakers that we work with, they're not vegans, you know, but they care about the environment and, and they care about their grapes and their harvest. So this right. is the way they're taking care of it. And that's how we, that's how I felt, okay, that's how I'm going to start because I care about that and I'm sure everybody right. else cares about it. So. Now, did you find that, was it, was, did you find that it was a, it was an even balance between old world winemakers to new world winemakers that were doing more of this natural vegan style wine or was it just, was it heavier on one side to the other? It depends where. We only import from three countries. It's uh, France, mm -hmm. Chile, and Italy. Right. Um, France, I, it's old school what I found. And yeah. Chile is more new, new world, you know? So, mm -hmm. And right. then Italy is a balance of both. So it's interesting right. how you kind of like, it depends. So it can't be one or the other. It depends on the, on the person, on the farmer and the winemaker, honestly. Right. It seems like that, that what I've experienced just in the years that I've been involved, that it seems like the old world is very on that traditional route of following every, a lot more things naturally. Yeah. You know, um, one of my favorite episodes of uh, Anthony Bourdain, No Reservations, was he, when he went to Provence. And he was talking to this wine winemaker and he was talking about the soil, and, he, and that's how I learned about how they don't irrigate. They just allow the roots to really dig deep. They mm -hmm. use, like, really crappy soil and really dig deep. So the root is stronger, and it makes more of a robust, mm -hmm. you know, voluptuous wine. And I just thought, that is amazing. But it was talking about just not that, but it just seemed like everything that, we're, that they were doing is, was more natural. So I was when I, when I got some of your wines i was like thinking this is what i was thinking of that she was get, that i was going to get from from <laughs> her was a lot of this combination and it's it's beautiful i love that i love seeing that these areas are are doing something that is natural not necessarily they're they're vegan but they're practicing natural and vegan practices to put out better 
quality uh, product, you know? And that's the one thing I constantly get from everything that I, ta- that I hear is quality. Do you, do, you, do you hear that too as far as what you experience? Yes. Well, it's very important, you know, to, well, first, I'm very picky with my wines. I'm very selective, even before all this. And I don't want to feature anything in our portfolio that I'm not going to drink. So I, um, I keep, I, I say to myself, okay, would I drink this? Yes. And the more I learn from the winemakers, the more I, it just changed everything for me. You know, because I saw it differently on the other side before right. I found out about it. You know, my dad, I, I say it a lot, but my dad was a musician. And we we all have music in our blood. All my sub- siblings have music in our blood. Um, and I played trumpet and drums growing up. But this wine, when I'm tasting this wine right here, and we're both tasting it together, this wine has rhythm, man. I, I feel <laughs> drums, I feel bass, I feel like getting down, doing this, like, just, <laughs> it, it is just rhythm. I can feel it all over, and this is great. What you're talking about is you don't put product out that you wouldn't drink, and this is just, if, if you guys got to join her club and get this wine. This wine is delicious, absolutely delicious. Um, and you have 81 other it, from what I see is you have 81 other varietals too, or different types of bottles that you carry. Yes, we have 81 SKUs. Um, I think we're about at 26 right now winemakers in total. Wow. Um, wow. The way that we want to structure it is to keep an ongoing relation with these winemakers because we're their only Im- we're their importers for the U.S. and we want to continue right. building this relationship with them. And I keep in I keep in communications with all of them. I love to see what they're doing. Like in Chile right now, they're going through the harvest. It's it's amazing. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I I I. I... I dig that. And it says one of the things I really caught my eye is that you sold over 18,000 bottles in 2020. That is awesome. That <laughs> is just shows you what the consumer is digging and what they're looking for, how we should, you know, approach it. If we are on the sales floor selling these wines, people are loving it. People are digging it. And I, I, I love that. People are embracing it. I got a, I got a question where, were you in the industry before the dis- distro biz? Distribution? Yeah, distribution, uh, yeah, biz. Catering business, so, but mm-hmm. not as far as, you know, a direct distribution, no. This is the first time. No. So no. it was a journey, that's for sure. It still is. It's a good yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds like an amazing journey. And it seems like you're really well known and far as is within the community i see you going all over the place and people really cheering you on and supporting you and that's the really nice thing you know Mm -hmm. but i was saying i i have francis gonzalez from my vegan wife everybody's like whoa all right (laughs) oh that's awesome yeah it is great it is so great and i i felt like wow I'm just a dad here <laughs> talking. I feel like you're a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. one thing Good about awesome. wines, so, what, you know, it's it's about food. It's about friendship. It's about love. It's about, it's about so many things. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you bring so many people together, and we can mm-hmm. keep it going and conversations of all sorts, and I love that, mm-hmm. you know, and I think that's where got me where we are today. We're not trying to be in that vegan box. We're trying to be yeah. part of everything. <laughs> right. And, you know, I also saw that you, you offer, uh, is it, is it, you offer cooking classes, plant, plant-based cooking classes? And yes. uh, on your, tell us about that. Uh, is I, would, uh, I would love, like, I, I mean, I make a mean bowl of oatmeal, and I'm really good at that, putting like the, the Cheerios in the bowl with the almond milk, I could do that. But tell me about these cooking classes. 
Well, there's two versions. So we have the virtual cooking classes, and that's we, we love partnering with other plant-based and vegan um, businesses. I mean, that that is key, right? So they are based um, out of the U.S., but they do virtual cooking classes, Italian cooking classes, and that's been a hit. And then with our wine club, we have my neighbor who is also vegan, but also happens to be a plant-based chef. So she Ooh. pairs every um, di- every wine that we send out to the wine club members. She pairs it right. with one of her recipes. And That's every beautiful. Monday, well, before, um, when during COVID, she was the mm-hmm. one ha- cooking for us as two. Like we would order right. food from her. <laughs> That's how good it was. Right. That's awesome. That is so, that's so great. You know, I, I, I love the world of, uh, I actually practiced being a vegan for several years and then did the vegetarian. I was a competing cyclist and triathlete. And so at one time my doctor told me, cause I turned 40, she was like, well, maybe you should try a little bit more of the Mediterranean diet so you can get a little bit more positive omega threes. But I really still eat mainly a real solely vegetarian and vegan diet. Um, mm-hmm. And one of the great things that I've, I've done in offerings is uh, with pairings, I've done things with vegan cheeses, alternatives like with Diaya. And I don't know if you've ever heard, heard of Follow Your Heart in Los Angeles. They're based in Los Angeles. Um, yes. But there's all these new alternatives, even with Beyond. You have Impossible doing all these great things. You have all these a- athletes endorsing it. You know, this is a great thing. Uh, you know, having a vegan wine with your vegan burger, you know, your Beyond Burger. That is just amazing. So have you seen any more, like, have, have you have you had any more collaborations with people in the industry like that with your wines? I'm always looking for collaborations and always open to that. Um, right. I, well, one thing is that no matter where I go and where I visit, I always find plant-based vegan options. You know, mm-hmm. no matter France, Italy, Chile. I mean, I I think I could have gained weight in Chile how much plant-based food <laughs> I, I found. <laughs> I mean, That's it was nice. absolutely delicious. And and what I love to do is also go for the traditional dishes that it just happened right. to be plant-based, you know? Um, but there, um, like right now we're pairing our wines with uh, macaroons here in Hudson Valley. Two ladies have a amazing little shop, um, you know, cheeses. We pair our wines with vegan cheeses. I'm always one to do offer another different, one, we pair with Miyoko's, we pair with a lot of well-known names and also smaller mm-hmm. businesses. So That's great. it's all about the experience of the wine and food. You know, it's, I always right. want to, you know, you can drink it by the whole bottle on your own. That's fine. Yeah. But I also want to give you the option of pairing it with something to with get that. Food. Yeah, <laughs> that, that is, it is just killer. I can just imagine every one of these bottles, um, Francis also uh, sent me this French bottle too. I can't even pronounce it. I, with my dad uh, speech, I would ruin it. And then we got an Italian as well. Just absolutely beautiful bottles. And, you know, that is the thing that I, 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 I see from these products is it's just, they just seem so worldly. And when you, t- when you see the bottles too, when you're talking about food, you're talking about areas where people sit and gather. It's, mm-hmm. it's their lifestyle. You exactly. know, it's all about, you know, every day drinking a bottle of wine. It's not just consuming and getting hammered, but it's about lifestyle. Hey, breaking mm-hmm. bread, like what we're doing right now. I, exactly. You know, that's what I, I love doing is just sitting with family, grabbing a bottle of wine, sitting around the table, no TV, throw, maybe throwing some music in the background, but having that time to converse and, and to get you know with each other you know really connect and i i these bottles seem like they just connect you i love that that's what i think is is really amazing yeah i dig that yeah um (laughs) thank you you 
you absolutely left me with no more questions. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, You know, what got you the, you know, we always talk about our journey into whether it's wine, beer or spirits, where, where did this journey begin for you? What was, was it a a certain bottle that you had? What was it? Was it something you tasted when you were younger or more recently? What was it that began your journey? Well, it's actually the first, okay. Well, after my um, visit to the winery, Mm -hmm. Um, I started researching, and Pierre um, is the winemaker, the first bottle du jour, you you pulled up, Chateau Mm -hmm. de Jour, and he he explained, yes, so he explained to us how when he purchased the vineyard, the, the, the soil was dead, you know, and he had to revive it, and it took him a few years, it took him like five to six years, and to see life in the soil. And he didn't use anything, he just let it be. So just to see someone that is, that's when it clicked. You don't have to be vegan to produce wines that are naturally vegan. That's exactly when it clicked. Because this man is a farmer, a grape grower, and a wine producer, and he's not a vegan. And he's explaining to me how he got this. And this is even before he even knew my journey. So he knew I was a vegan, but he really didn't know everything about the journey. And just right. that captivated me. And then that gave me that extra push, like, okay, yeah, we need this. So that that was the beginning. So Pierre had a beginning? lot to do with this. Mm-hmm. Did you have a, a particular wine that was just like, that? that's it, I want to produce something just like that, but vegan? Well, we're just going into our private labeling now. Um, Mm -hmm. And the first one is going to be from the Finger Lakes. um, And the second one is going to be from Oregon. And these are winemakers that I really, like all of the winemakers we have close communication with. But the, you know, I wanted to do something domestic private labeling first because I'm here in the States. Um, right. We have one coming from Puerto Rico as well, but it's not nice. it's not great. It's cacao, but Ooh. you know it's from the island and it's produced right. and grown. So my my whole motive on everything is I I love wine. I love food. I've always been very selective on real food and wine, and I just want to present that to people. You know, that's that's right. mainly my thing. And you have to go to where it comes from. Why are you going to sell right. a product if you don't know where it comes from? So that's my belief. If I'm going to sh- tell you that, you know, you should try this, then I have to know everything from where it comes from, right? So that's, right. that's, my, that's my motive, and that's what I love to do. <laughs> Very nice. So you said Oregon, and what other domestic area you said? Uh, Finger Lakes. You're having- New York. New York. Okay, cool. Very mm-hmm. nice. And... Um, what are, do you know what the varietals are going to be? Well, in type? the Finger Lakes, um, Finger Lakes is going to be uh, Champerson, which is very good for that um, terroir. And then um, Oregon is going to be two of them, a Rosé and a Gamay blend. But they will be Ooh. coming out soon, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely, you got, I gotta, I gotta dig my teeth into those too. Those, like I said, these things are so welcoming, and the just the presentation, what I taste is just, it's it's about feast gathering. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, let me see. Um, so, in you know, as we we're celebrating Women's History Month, what have you seen as far as have you seen a was it has it been easy for you doing promoting these vegan wines, especially being a woman in the industry, or has it been has it been kind of hard, difficult? Um, have you had some resistance in the industry? Of yeah, yeah. Um, um, I remember when I first started going to winemakers, and uh, nobody really understood what vegan wines was, you know, and right. and you know. Um, there was a lot of confusion. So, of course, that understanding wasn't there, but it was because they didn't know. So I felt like, okay, 
then let me show you what I mean. And then you tell me if you do. And um, right. that's how I came, you know, that's how it became. It was like, let's, let's take out the vegan one. Let's just say no animal products. You put, you don't put any animal products. Why would you, you know, like, and that's how I would approach it. And right. I got respect, you know, you have to get people to understand what you're saying in different um levels not because you're vegan not because you're vegetarian but let's do something that's neutral and that's how i got right. it and it's been challenging but yeah. you know it it is a male dominated the wine industry and you know it is and now it's just so great to see so many changes you know and, and absolutely i'm so proud and and grateful to be part of the journey yeah, it, we need a lot more diversity out there. We need a lot more, uh, we need to have, have more open mind, um, especially like what you were saying with the vegan wines. I've been more on the floor as far as the retail side and trying to push a lot of vegan products and customers think that it's just junk and it's really not. You know, it's it's really not. It, it, it's the lack of education. That's what I think, you know, lack of communication, the proper education and communication that they're getting. Um, but I, I totally applaud you because I, I think that we all should support people like you that are doing things that are outstanding like this. We need to keep that push. And especially for supporting just women in general in the industry, supporting small businesses. This is this is very this is vital because we're not going to have exploration if we don't. Everything's going to be the same. And I I tell a lot of customers this. I'll be blunt. And I'll say, do you eat the same food every day? Because I don't. And if you if you want to do that, then you could have the same thing. But if you want to explore, this is what wine is about: exploring and having yeah. some fun and supporting these things. And this is important. Um, this is this is great. I, I I love what you're bringing to the table. I love that. Um, what is, do you have a certain vision, like where you want to proceed and keep your, your wines going, these vegan wines going, like, where do you want them? Where do you want to see them? Where do you want to see them go? Where would you want to see your business grow, grow to in the industry? Well, first I want to um, make sure that all the wine producers we work with that they are acknowledged and they're known for their work. This is very important to me. Um, we visit every vineyard to make sure that we make that connection with them. And they're all small businesses, small farmers, you know, like it, it's it. so it. I want to bring that more to the table, you know, um, and I want us to be like a staple, you know, like vegan wise. What is, you know, like it's, it's just, it, it's just good, natural vegan ones. We want to be world, create that, um, that new, you know, like what, like when the certain, the word vegan is there, people think it's not going to taste good, you know? Right. I, you know, it, so that's why I keep saying naturally because these were not deliberately made to be vegan. This is just going back right. to old traditional, no animal products, back to, you know, the, right. it, it's so we want to bring that more to the table and we want that to be more worldwide known. And one day, you know, we want our wines to be um, worldwide. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That is that is amazing. Um, and for those of you who are joining us, don't forget if you have any questions for Francis or I, you can leave uh, that question right in that little bubble with a question mark. Um, we love to hear some, some questions from you. Um, and so like, as far as, uh, again, with the, with, with it being natural, um, do, are you finding a lot of people coming to you or are you going to the producer itself? Are you finding more producers or are the producer seeking you? Well, when we first started, I had to knock on a lot of doors and, um, now people are coming to us. Yes. But what people, um, I want to stress that we have to visit every vineyard. So it's not that easy of, of just giving me the portfolio. We taste the wines. You tell us it's vegan right. and then that's it. 
it, it's mm -hmm. a long process. So that's why we only import from three countries because that's what I've been able to visit. And then COVID hasn't helped it, right? So, yeah. um, yes, we have more people. We get emails every day. You know, the next right. one we want to bring in is Spain, but we have to visit Spain. But we have some great wines that we already tasted. We just need to verify everything else, you know. Right. Um, so, yeah, it, it, we get a lot of view, and I'm very happy for that because that means that people are willing to share their good naturally vegan wines with everyone now, you know. So. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and are you trying to get, are, are you just going just straight from your wine club or are you going to try to get them distributed somewhere else, like in retail or anything, anywhere else? Well, we are an importer, and I am a mm -hmm. distributor. So mm -hmm. we have the wine club. So that's to 41 mm -hmm. states. And then wow. I do um, wholesale in New York and California and soon Puerto Rico and uh, awesome. Florida. So uh, we, do, we can sell to restaurants, wine stores, um, and we are in the process of opening a wine store in Puerto Rico. The law is a little nice. different there. So that's, yeah, <laughs> I'm very excited yeah. about that one. So, uh -huh. um, yeah, and, and in, in time, we want to work with other distributors that, are, that want to share our wine somewhere else, you know, while, you know other states. We want, we want this to be accessible. To everyone right you know it right. is and, that is the ultimate goal and what states offhand can you not get your product if you're if is there are certain states you said there are certain states that you can't get your product well no one could get their product there certain states it's just <laughs> <laughs> that's that's just you know another story <laughs> <laughs> so it's so, only a few you know, states that doesn't allow the direct to consumer. Right, right. That's 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 tough. That's tough. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> now, out of all this, when you discovered the what you would call more natural wine, the winemaking process, has there been a particular region that has just blown you away? That just said, "Oh my gosh, I didn't know that this could be done like this." With the terroir, the, the resources that they have? Oh, well, France is, you know, okay. I mean, all the three countries that I work with, I love their wines. And I, you know, I follow everything and, and trust everything that they do. France is always going to be the capture because it's where it all started. And also it's where we have our, we only have one champagne. And that's because it's the only one that we can have. Champagne is very hard for us to find a vegan one. And mm. to have found a champagne where the winemaker was already certified vegan and has been doing this for generations before we even approached them, it just holds something. But then you have right. Chile when you have the um, the young winemakers that they're doing the new world, you know, they're new world wine producers and they're bringing something right. like what we're drinking today. That's, that's, yeah. this is Malbec is amazing. And it is this, delicious. I can't get, I can't stop drinking it. <laughs> so good. <laughs> they are, uh, they wanted to break away from their father's, um, you know, the, the old world. So that's what their mission is. And you can taste it in their wine. They're, they're amazing and uh, in a different way, in, in a new world way. And then we have Italy where... You know, uh, uh, am I still there? Can you hear me? Yeah, now you are, yeah. Okay, okay. And then um, we have, yeah, so every country brings something to me. That's awesome. You know, um, for those that that missed the beginning, uh, I'm having Francis's uh, Malbec, the 2017 Gabre, 2017 Malbec from Chile, and I actually paired it with Go Raw Trail Mix, and 
what it's doing to the trail mix, especially with the raisins, the almonds, um, the cashews, it's just making them more vibrant. It's, it's delicious. It's absolutely delicious. And when you find things that are, that you can compare, when you talk about natural wines with natural entities that kind of mesh, you know, how they say regions, the food pairs well with the wine. So if you're in France, the food from France pairs well. It's just the same thing when you have natural based products working together like that. It is unbelievable. And you, how, how many people would say, oh yeah, I'd have, trail mix with my wine it is absolutely ridiculous so delicious i can believe it for sure (laughs) absolutely so we're ending we're getting close to ending our time and you know again i have to thank you for sharing your time with the viewer for with myself um every one of you ladies you're you're ambassadors to the industry you're doing something amazing um, and it's, it's sad that it took me so long to hear a lot more from you. I like a lot more from all the ladies that have, I have sat down with and, and spoke to. And this is something that we should be knowing like everything else. You are doing something amazing. And, um, I can't say enough. Uh, we, I will continue to support you. I hope you all can t- continue to support Francis and her vegan wines and follow her. Um, and for my $2,000 question is, you know, like, again, I go back to, we're celebrating Women's History Month, and it's all about celebrating women and what they've done. Um, what would you, what piece of advice would you give to the ladies that are starting their journey, that are in the middle of their journey, that may be in their crossroads, trying to figure out what they want to do or they want to continue. Or maybe they've been battered down by, I hate to say it, by the, the male population, male guys in the industry. What, do you, what kind of piece of advice would you give those ladies right now? Honestly, follow your instincts, follow your heart. I know it's always easier said than done, but once you have something that you believe in, just go for it. And don't listen too much. Listen within. Don't listen outside. I mean, yes, listen outside, but to a certain point, listen more inside. And that's and just go for it. Honestly, if you really believe in it and you go for it, it will fall into place. It really will. You know, it oh, might yeah. sound, you know, sometimes it might be harder than others, but at the end it will fall. It, it will go all go into place, believe me. <laughs> and remember, for those of you that are joining us, you can go up on top where it says Breaking Bread with Corey, right where the live little light is. If you hit that little arrow, you can start following Francis right now. And I, I hope all of you that are joining me right now follow Francis. Um, you can follow me if you want, but you, I hope you all follow Francis and what she's doing and support her. And where can we find how we're what is where can we find your wines how where, what information can you give the viewer right now where we can get your wines everything is at veganwines.com from the wholesale to the direct to consumer to our events to our blog page um i i try to put as much of my experiences on the blog page you know um i just have somebody proofread it for me but all the thoughts are there that of experiences and our events now that it's getting warmer we're going to try to start making you know being part of more events so um veganwines.com veganwines.com everybody veganwines.com please follow francis francis gonzalez thank you so much for your time for your sitting down breaking bread with me um i will continue when I open, continue to open these bottles, I will continue to talk about you and to continue to support you like I do all the ladies that I have sat down with and broken bread with. We all need to do that. And I have a question. Do you have a semi-sweet wine? We're working on that one. Um, They're working on it. Mm-hmm. So, so you're working do on that? It, yes. It's just we have to visit every vineyard. So it's just been um, a little bit... It, it's been a slower pace, but it's coming. 
we found a few. We just need to verify it. So definitely. Oh, uh, you know, and and that's my sister. So she needs to just start drinking stronger wines. Okay. You don't. You don't need to see. <laughs> but no. So thank you. I, as soon as I saw that name, I was looking at it. I'm like, oh, that's my sister. I think that's my sister. Um, I have another one more question. What is your favorite wine? Do you have a favorite wine? All of all of them, because all it, of them. I say it. Yeah, definitely. They all have a story behind them. I love them all for the different reasons, whether it's one to pair with food or one to have with the friends or one to have as a nightcap. It all it all depends. Um, right. But yeah. And for your sister, we do have the cacao wine, which is it's it's interesting because it doesn't taste like chocolate. It tastes like cacao, but they grow pineapples too on the on wow. in, in right next to it. So you have that pineapple burst to it. So she may like that too. We we don't want to influence her to keep on drinking semi sweet wines. It started influencing. <laughs> <laughs> I no, try to be kidding. neutral. I, I know, I know, I know. You're like, I'm just an innocent bystander now. What did I do? I'm getting in this conversation. I'm in between you. No, but again, you're amazing, Francis. Uh, you know, I, again, I, I, I feel so obliged to, to sit with you and talk with you and break bread with you, share your stories. Um, they're inspiring. Uh, as, like I said, all the ladies that I get to sit down with, you keep on inspiring me to keep on doing what I need to do to get the information out there and to continue, continue to support ambassadors like you. We need to all do that. And don't forget, if you're in the industry right now and you're watching, this is what we need to do right now. We need to support people like Francis and, and help them out, especially in the vegan wine industry. Thank you so much, Francis, for your time. And uh, we got to do this again. Okay, we, I gotta, I gotta continuously taste your wines because it would be a crime <laughs> not to. Awesome. All right, thank you so much, and thank, thank you, you so everybody much, for Francis. joining us. Bye. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Right. All right. So as we are ending our conversation and breaking bread with Francis Gonzalez, I want to thank all of you who joined us tonight. Don't forget, uh, veganwines.com. Go and support Francis. Follow her right now. You can click on that arrow right now and start following her. Um, support Vegan Wines um, as many as you can in the industry. Um, support small businesses. This is important right now. Support minority-owned businesses right now, whether you belong to the Black, the Hispanic, the Indigenous, the LGBTQ communities. We need to support you right now. This is our job. If you're wearing a pin, if you're cracking the books and you're getting your certifications and you're in the industry, now is the time to start cracking. Roll up your sleeves and let's do the work. Let's support these ladies. Let's support these people and let's do the work. All right? And don't forget, in just a few moments, I'm going to be taking a step back resetting and i'm going to bring on another new ambassador to the wine industry miss mara sweeney um and this is going to be uh, such such a a joy i'm so excited um she's a speech pathologist for kids and also she's studying right now to take her certification for her wide set so uh stay tuned in just a few moments i'll i'll catch you in a few moments cheers <laughs>